Good morning, everybody. Day 46. Look how beautiful this is. It's perfect. And I just left Rock Point, that nice little campsite. Well, it wasn't really nice, but it made do. And it had a great sunset, which made up for it. And now we are heading into Waynesboro, Virginia, everybody. 15.5 miles to get to Waynesboro, where I'm pretty sure, I think I have everything already lined up for the whole town, so, which is good. A lot less planning, to say the least. So, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, we got Humpback Mountain today. That's pretty much our only big climb. And it's not really that big. It's just in our way, so we're gonna go over it. And I think that's just about it. I could ramble all morning, you guys know me. But I won't do that to you guys. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great, great day. And I'll touch back with the cool stuff and the views, just like I do, baby. It looks like it's gonna be yet another beautiful day on the AT. Look, the sun is out. That means it's gonna be a good day most of the time. 15 miles to Waynesboro. Dripping Rock parking area. I found a little stash bag that David Martin left me. Look what's in it, everybody. Chocolate chip cookies, fruit snacks, jerky, 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 and some chewy fruities, and some wasabi soy sauce almonds. Thank you, David Martin, for hooking me up with these goodies. I'm gonna try to eat all this before I get to Waynesboro. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but I'm pretty sure I can handle that task. So, yeah. Hidden trail magic, baby. I love it. Boop. That's where we came from. Looks like we're about to the top of Humpback Rocks. I'm assuming that's what all this is. <laughs> there is a side trail right up here too to the top of those rocks who we just showed you. See? Side trail. Blue blaze. The trees are growing. Yeah. Humpback rocks. It's not really... That side trail, I can say, honestly, it's not really worth it. But... It's still beautiful up here. That's just not the best view you're going to get. I'll get us better ones today. You watch and see. White blaze. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, everybody. That was not the top of Humpback Rocks. 1.9 miles over to here is the top of Humpback Rock. So that was just a view spot. I thought for sure it was Humpback Rock, but it's not. We're still almost two miles away from there. But don't worry. I'll get us there in about 40 minutes. <laughs> Working our way there. All right. Look at this view. Let's zoom you in. This is pretty nice. Some kind of compound over here. I've been told what it is, but I can't remember. I think it's part of the ski resort. There's a ski resort right here. Boom. That's got to be part of the ski resort. Pretty beautiful little view though. Yeah. Loving it. He just keeps spitting us out to it. Beautiful. This is super cool area here. Walk on these ledges. Ledges, these cliffs. Which I love it. And you know what? In 2012, I remember it like it was yesterday camped right up here I think it's like right in here pretty awesome ooh another one top of humpback mountain everybody this is the top and we got beautiful views today holy cow the sky is so clear yeah humpback mountain the summit. Now we can pretty much just go down for a long time to Sealy Worth Shelter. I think that's what it's called. Don't quote me on that, but I think. And then from there, we got one little up and then down. So, yeah, the big climb of the day is over. We got one more little one after the shelter, but that's it. Back rocks, everybody.
most through hikers don't do it, which is crazy to me. I always look at it like, well, how many more times am I really gonna be here? I might as well just go. You know, it's not that far. And it's beautiful. Side trails are well worth it. Paul C. Wolf Memorial Shelter, everybody. The setting at this shelter is pretty nice. You got this river or stream or creek or whatever it is running right in front of the shelter. Nice camping here. Yeah, it's a good little shelter. I mean, if you want to stay in a shelter. Look, it's even got windows. I don't stay in shelters, but look, I love how they did this. They wrapped it with metal so that when you're cooking on there, you're not burning anything. Five miles left to Rockfish Gap. So should be there by one o'clock, which is perfect. But I figured I'd show you this shelter, it's another decent shelter, but I don't stay in shelters. So I just passed the Low Family Cemetery. I usually always show that cemetery because it's just little rocks that point out gravestones. There's like four or five people there. So I did not show you this time. I've never ever seen anybody there. There's like four or five hikers there. <laughs> Crazy. Now it looks like we're on the downside. We had to climb up out of that shelter, but not a big climb. And now it looks like we're on the downside of it. Heading to Rockfish Gap. I can taste the town food. Mm. I don't even know what I'm gonna get yet, but I know I wanna get a lot of it. Waynesboro, here we come. We are real close to Rockfish Gap now. 
you can hear the road. Oh, <laughs> every time you see one of these, you know you're real close to the road too. A kiosk. You know you're close. It's right here. Boom. Rockfish Gap, everybody. Look. Let me show you. Let me prove it. Rockfish Gap. And there's my ride. Check this out, everybody. It's Rockfish Gap Outfitters. I stop here every year. Look, and they must know it because. <laughs> Look at this. This is awesome. <laughs> it says my name on it. <laughs> Celebrity. <laughs> this is awesome. Rockfish Outfitters. Thank you for putting my name on a sign. I appreciate it. <laughs> now let's go in here and get a fuel canister. What's happening, everybody? So I made it into Waynesboro, Rockfish Gap, Cindy Kirshner. Uh, tell you what, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Cindy, for picking me up at Rockfish Gap, put me up in the quality inn for this evening. And look, everybody. She had this goodie bag for me, too. So let's just dump it out. Here, look. Let me show you. Ooh, the money shot, baby. Apples, granola, Pringles, pecan swirls. Those are going to go fast. Cheez-Its, peanuts, some hand sanitizer. What's this? Oh, a card. Look at that. Gift card to Ming Garden. The all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet here in town. Perfect. Let me get this. Let me get this card out of here. I'm gonna destroy the envelope. Hold on one second. <laughs> all right, envelope is destroyed. Look at that though. It says here, April first, twenty twenty-one. Hawk, enjoy the rest. Enjoy your rest in Waynesboro, Virginia. This painting is of the Ty River footbridge is by Finn Mirror on Etsy. I hope the rest of your hike is full of brilliant sunrises and glorious sunsets. Take care and hike happy. Cindy K. Artist Rebecca Harnish. Yeah, remember when we were on that footbridge and we made it shake like crazy? <laughs> awesome. So, and I got this box here. Uh, I haven't opened it yet, but it's my new pair of shoes from Skip Skip James, Skip and Donna James in Elberton, my home base. So I'll open that up here in a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's just shoes and a little bit more of my guidebook in there. Uh, so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to eat this whole pack of pecan swirls. I'm going to jump in the shower. I'm going to start laundry. Then I'm going to go to Ming's and tear up some all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. So, huge, huge shout-out to Cindy Kirshner. <sighs> I think she habitual offendered me in one day. Ride from Rockfish Gap. Stop the outfitter so I can get another canister of fuel. A goodie bag. And she put me up for the night at the Quality Inn. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Cindy, for everything. And now it's time to go in here and clean up. Look, everybody. 
I've got a new stove. The Oli Camp Ion. <laughs> so, when I got the canister from Rockfish Gap Outfitters, I just didn't even check it like I thought I would do the next time I bought a canister. I got back to the hotel room and my stove would not screw on to that canister. So I called Rich up at Rockfish Gap Outfitters and I said, hey, is there any possible way that you could like drive me that other brand of canister that you had? So they had two different brands. They had the Primus and they had that blue and white one I showed you earlier. Uh, actually, the same company that makes these. So it was the Oli Camp canister. Anyways, he brought me this canister instead of the Oli Camp, the Primus. Tried to screw my stove on that. It would not go on there. So <laughs> we were in the parking lot of the Quality Inn trying to figure it out. And I'm just like, man, this is crazy. I said, can I just hop in your car and you take me back to the outfitter and I'll try screwing my stove onto every canister there until it fits one. <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah, jump on in. So we went back to Rockfish Gap Outfitters and my stove would not screw onto any other canisters. So it's been a good run stove, but the BRS is now in the trash at the Outfitters. And I'm standing there and he, Rich, the guy that owns Rockfish Gap Outfitter, I'm pretty sure he's the owner. Uh, he pulled this out of some kit. Comes with a cook pot, this stove, a couple other items in the in the kit. And I'm like, ooh, that's almost the same exact size of the BRS I got. And this screws on to every canister in the in the store. So I'm pretty positive it was my stove, not the canisters. My bad. Uh, and then I told Rich, I was like, you know what? I'll just buy that whole setup and just take the stove. And he told me, I told myself, if Hawk comes in here today, he's not paying for nothing. So huge, huge shout out to Rich at the Rockfish Gap Outfitters for hooking me up with this new stove and a canister, a full canister that actually this stove screws on to. So yeah, the whole time I think it was the threads on my BRS, but what do you expect when you put 8,000 miles on a stove? It's bound to fail at some point. So that's a wrap on the BRS and I've moved on to a different stove. We'll check it out. It's fairly light. So, I mean, it's super light. It's a nice little stove. Yeah, it ain't much bigger than the BRS I had. So yeah, thank you, Rich, at Rockfish Gap Outfitters. I appreciate you guys for sure. <sighs> stove problems are solved. I do believe this stove will screw onto any canister I get now because I don't think it was the canisters. I think it was my stove. What a long, hard lesson I learned. Crazy. Anyways, I'm going to tear up Ming's Garden Buffet. And I'll touch back with you guys after dinner with the end of the day recap. So, yeah, that's what it is. It wasn't the canisters. It was my stove. Oh, Ming Garden. You are in trouble, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Main gardens. Mm. All right. Let's go just see how much Chinese food we can really eat. <laughs> it's Ming's, baby. <laughs> What's happening, everybody? End of the day recap. Day 46. We left Rock Point, uh, where we got that great sunset last night. 848.7. When I was at the US 250. Uh, which is Rockfish Gap, 864.4, makes it a 15.7 mile day, everybody. 
And today was actually, the weather was perfect. It was beautiful. And the Hawk support team was out in full force today. It's crazy. Um, yeah, it's, it's craziness. Um, I'm always in awe of how big the Hawk support team really is. And, man, I appreciate you guys to the max. Uh, Hawk support team is definitely the best. And who would have ever thought that it would have gotten this crazy? Um, yeah, my mind is blown once again. You guys continue to blow my mind, which is wild to me. And the other day when I grabbed the Visp rain jacket from Nick Reese, I never tried it on, but I just, you know, it's a grab and go kind of deal. And, uh, and this thing fits like a glove. Thank you so much, Reese family. Yeah, and it's super light. I love it. And then on to today's Hawk support team. David Martin this morning leaving me a bag full of goodies at a Dripping Rock parking area. It's perfect. Thank you, David. Uh, Cindy Kirshner for picking me up, bringing me to the Quality Inn, paying for my night's stay, a goodie bag, and then we got even outfitters becoming part of the Hawk support team, baby. So, Rich at Rockfish Gap Outfitters, huge, huge shout out to you uh, for putting my name on the sign. Nice. And then hooking me up with that stove and that canister. Man, I appreciate it for sure. Um, and like I say, it the last few days, I guess pretty much since I started, I'm humbled every day by the Hawksport team. Um, yeah, it seems like it's thousands of people. I mean, it's it's crazy. And I appreciate every single one of you, from comments to no comments, just following along, to coming out and meet me, to putting me up in rooms. I mean, I love it all, every little piece of it. Um, and I appreciate you guys more than you will ever know. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you guys do for me. It's pretty mind blowing to say the least. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna zero tomorrow. So I guess we'll go live tomorrow at 7 p.m. which will be Sunday. 7 p.m. If you're watching this, it's going to be today. <laughs> so it's Sunday. Oh, and better late than never. I've had some people reach out to me, uh, ask me if I could do something for a Hawk Support team member. And I just keep, you know, it's in and out of my brain all day long. I keep thinking about doing it, and then I don't ever do it. But better late than never. Chris Hegarty, happy 50th birthday, my friend. His birthday was Thursday, I believe. Uh, today's Saturday, so a few days off. Happy belated birthday, Chris. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you did the 50s bring a whole new adventure for you, my friend. So, yeah, that's what it is. I'm starting to ramble. Day 46, 15.7. I'm going live tomorrow at 7 p.m. Sunday, 7 p.m. I don't know the date, <laughs> but it's tomorrow. Or today, if you're watching it. Uh, yeah, day 47, 46, I mean, 15.7. And I hope you guys had a great, great day. And I'll touch back with you guys in the morning, baby.